welcome to Word of the Day Wednesdays. I am author Nicole D. Miller. Here is my debut novel, When Love Wins. When Love Wins is an urban Christian fiction story, a tale of two young female cousins with a rift in the relationship. When Natalie, the faith-based social justice advocate writer, loses her mother, she moves in with her cousin Ashley and uncle for grief support, but instead of a warm welcome, she receives an icy cold one from Ashley. Is there more to the story? Of course there is, and you can learn more at whenlovewins.love. All right, let's get started. So as you guys know, every Wednesday, I piggyback off of my latest blog. This week, I released a blog called I Shouldn't Be Here. This blog was inspired by a conversation I had with the spiritual mother in my life as I was reflecting on my past journey. And it's interesting how you can come so far that you don't even realize how far you've come. You don't even realize you have transformed into a totally different person <laughs> and some of your life experiences are just dim glimmers in the background of your current identity. So while talking to her, I just realized how many obstacles I had overcome, not because of in, not because in and of myself, but because of divine intervention. And this is what this blog is about. So I'm listing out these significant things in my life journey that should have stopped me, that should have made me a statistic, um, but actually became catalysts for my purpose. One of the things I say is I never should have graduated high school. And people could be surprised um, to hear me make a bold statement like that. But the reason I say that is because things are really difficult at home. I didn't have a place to stay my senior year. And there were a few instances where I was sleeping on my friend's couches. And it literally was, I don't know, I don't want to say life or death because I don't feel like I was in any physical harm. But... It was definitely a valley of decision time because if I didn't choose to complete my high school career, I wouldn't have made it to college, which was a very um, life-changing experience for me outside of academically, socially, spiritually, um, identity and purpose wise. But the blessing is that even the people who were in my life at that time, even if they're no longer in my life, they were used to help me get to the next level. But the real thing that impresses me is that 17-year-old Nicole had all this other stuff going on, but was like diligent to keep going to school. Even though nobody was monitoring me, <laughs> like there was something in me that was set on finishing high school. And I marvel at that and I know that was the grace of God because my head was all over the place back then, let me tell you. Another thing I say is I should have been a baby mama. What I do clarify is that there's nothing wrong with being a baby mama. If you're a baby mama, don't get offended. My mother was a baby mama. Her mother was a baby mama. Her mother was a baby mama, okay? What I'm saying is for me and my destiny and my calling, that was a different type of hardship I was not called to. Yet, the decisions I was making and the lack of awareness of my identity and my purpose allowed me to keep putting myself in situations where I should have been, but God. So more divine intervention that allowed me to have a different path. Another statement I make is I should have been in an abusive relationship. And honestly, I should have been in several. <laughs> but I only talk about the one on this blog because it's only 800 words. But I just talk about how unhealthy and toxic my ex and I were. We were very young. And it's interesting. I was watching a documentary of a well-known artist who's known for abusing his partner. Not a recent one, you guys, because I know where your head is going, but an older one. And they were young, and I was thinking, I had a thought like, man, that could have been me and my ex. And I never looked at it that way because, honestly, I just wasn't, it didn't get there. And so I didn't recognize the hand of God and not letting it get there until I was watching this documentary. And I was like, oh, it could have, it could have and should have got there. <laughs> we were on the cusp. Um, so that's what I realized is like God has saved me several times um, from abusive situations. And again, 
a lot of people in my family has went have went through those situations and the calling on my life was really to be a curse breaker um, from those things so on top of me <laughs> almost not finishing high school uh, there were some moments I almost didn't finish college <laughs> So another statement I say is I shouldn't have graduated college. And I talk about a significant key point where I was engaged at the time and my fiance, um, we were planning on getting married after graduation. But I was struggling academically, you guys. Shout out to the business school at Miami University. <laughs> no joke, okay? I was on the struggle bus and I wanted to quit. You know, it was my junior year, I think it was first semester and I had had enough and I was very insecure and I had never been that challenged academically and I've always been like an A student, whatever. But I, I met my match, okay? I met my match in college. So I called him, my ex, and I was probably in tears and I was just like, I just wanna come home and get married. Like to me, that was the easier option. It's what I really wanted to do anyway. And honestly, it's what he wanted to do. But his response was definitely another divine intervention moment because he was the one that was really big on us getting married and he would not have cared if I would not have finished school. But in that moment, he said what I needed to hear, which was, we will wait, you finish school. That was God <laughs> and another, um, another amazing moment. Another... Um, statement I say is I should have been pregnant at 20 and I use that specific age because I just remember having spiritual dreams God was warning me you know he was showing me again that I could have had a premature um, motherhood experience which is fine if that's your story God allowed it and he's using it working it for you but for me he was trying to do something different and so I share about how he intervened on my behalf in that way so all of this is my reflection and seeing what I feel like the father was showing me was that my life was a miracle. I've been waiting on a miracle in this season. I am walking in a miracle in this season. But honestly, I have been thinking like, oh, I haven't seen too many miracles in my life. Like I have been thinking that. And I feel bad saying it out loud, but God already, know, already knows our hearts. And the reason I was thinking it was because I was defining a miracle as like, you know, biblical miracles. I'm like, I haven't seen a lame person walk. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen a limb grow from, you know, nothing to a full arm or full leg or whatever. But what God was showing me was like, girl, you see all this I did for you? You should not be where you are. <laughs> You know, and I felt like I had to repent. Like, man, I wasn't giving you your props, Jesus. Like, my life is a miracle. I should not be here. So, all of that is to introduce to you guys my new blog series titled, drumroll please, can you guess it? If you did, I'm so proud of your smart cookie. It is, I shouldn't be here. So, I'm opening up submissions to you guys for you to submit an article um, detailing your triumphs, if you've overcome adversity, if you see these obstacles in your life where you should have went left, but you went right, and it was the hand of God in your life. Um, I'm asking for them to be faith-based, but they don't have to be. And the word count is 800 to 1,000 words. I want it already edited, so I don't have to do a lot of work. And I will be posting these on my blog page through the month of September 1st. I shouldn't say through the month, up until September 1st. So if you're interested in learning more, email me, info at ndmillerpublishing.com. All right, so we have some exciting news. Guess what's coming back? Yes, Girl Talk. Girl Talk is coming back, you guys, June 23rd. Mark your calendar, save the date, bring your girl, Grab your wine ticket. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get the drink ticket ahead of time, guys. Okay, remember to do that. Um, and we're so excited. So the topic is doing it all, and we're actually collabing with Micah Dixon from Z one hundred seven point nine. Um, she has her group group chat, and she's going to be a featured panelist along with some other heavy hitting women. 
So we have Alicia Ellis, we have Ari um, Baker. I always want to say Ari Strong because of her IG handle. Ari Baker, we have Corey Sykes, who is another black female publisher in Cleveland. So I'm excited. Um, and of course, Butter, whose studio is going to be at Ink Therapy Studio in Bedford. Tickets are 10 online on Eventbrite, 15 at the door. So get it at Eventbrite. Come through, enjoy another segment of Girl Talk. Um, you guys know we always get deep, we always get meaty. And it's also going to be a time of networking, um, connecting, collabing, creating purposeful, divine relationships with other heavy hitting women that are where you want to be or are where you're going. So tap in. And I'm excited about this topic too because it's really for me to elevate. I am elevating, but I want to continue elevating. So I really want to glean from the wisdom of these women and those who appear and attend. That was that. Um, I feel like there is another thing. What am I forgetting? No, I think those are the two things. Um, so if you haven't already, tap in at NicoleDMiller.com. I just dropped my newsletter and my journalist piece for my soiree about Olympic uh, gold medalist, hometown hero, legend, Butch Reynolds is still out there. So check that out. And yeah, other than that, you guys, I am keeping busy. I'm excited. I've been doing these ghostwriting projects. We are basically completing <laughs> one of these projects and moving into the publishing stages. So there will be more to come on that note. And then, of course, I have my own personal projects that I'm working on. Yes. But I would love to connect with you guys. So definitely tap into our next event for Girl Talk. Yes, men who support women are invited and welcomed. So. All right, till next time, thank you for tuning in to Word of the Day Wednesdays, and I will see you next week.